Upscaling has become a popular topic with the release of various premium tools like Magnific, which allows you to take an image with a low amount of detail and then increase that detail, and in some cases, add details that weren't originally there. But there is a way to achieve similar results in Automatic One using an extension called Ultimate SD Upscale. This can be built directly into your workflow. I'll be breaking down what the options do and how you can use this tool to increase the detail within your images. But like the video, check out the Patreon, and let me give it to you bite-sized. So what is SD Ultimate Upscale? It's an extension used within the image to image section of the web UI, and it takes an image, divides it into equally sized portions called tiles, and then in-paints them. This is done to build additional detail on top of a portion of the image at a higher resolution. You can install this extension by navigating to the web UI's extension tab and using the available tab to load the index and search for ultimate SD upscale, then pressing install and then using the apply and restart UI button in the install tab. You can also install this using the install from URL option. I have a tutorial linked in the description breaking down the whole extension tab. So if you want a deeper dive on that topic, then check it out. This extension can only be found in the image to image tab under scripts, where you can select it and it will show up at the bottom of your web UI below the script dropdown. Now that we have this extension installed, why don't we break down the options within the UI so we can understand what they do and incorporate it into our workflow. You have a few options in terms of deciding the size of an image after the ultimate upscale is applied. And this is split between using the image to image settings, using a custom size of your choosing, or scaling from the image's original size using a multiplier. You have a number of upscales you can choose from, which is the model that sharpens and increases the fidelity of an image using a variety of algorithms. I would typically recommend using the same one you use for the high res fix, but you may want to experiment with alternatives. You can select between three different methods for your image to be redrawn when the upscaling takes place. This essentially determines the order in which the tiles are redrawn into the image. Linear will redraw the tiles one by one, column by column and row by row in order. Chess will redraw the tiles in a checkboard pattern and this reduces the chance of seams which are the lines between the tiles which can appear in your image. Then the last option is none and this will disable the redrawing of each individual tile instead presenting the image at once with minimal changes as we have no tiles to in-paint. The tile width and height determines the size of each tile which will be used to rebuild the image you are upscaling and the height being zero by default means that it will be the same value as the width. A higher value like 768 will result in less artifacts with quicker image generation time as you're in-painting large portions of the image. A lower value like 256 will take longer as you're in-painting smaller tiles which will increase the overall number of tiles which make up the image, but in exchange, you will get finer details within the individual tiles of your image. I'll throw up on screen a comparison between 256 tile size on the left and 768 tile size on the right so you can see the differences, as throwing up all of the images may make things tricky to see, and the 256 image took the longest, so it's likely the one you'll want to see without generating it yourself. When it comes to getting those really nice details which make your image look like it was upscaled with a premium tool, this is likely the feature you'll want to utilize once you choose an image and find the settings that work best for you. The mask blur will determine how much blur is applied to the edge of the tiles to avoid seams being visible when the image is generated, as we're generating our image tile by tile and this can result in visible lines where those tiles were redrawn. Using mask blur can help mitigate this by reducing the visibility of the lines. I've set mine to zero at points in this video to highlight those seams so you can see them in action. Padding will determine how many pixels of the neighboring tiles will be considered when processing a tile. I generated an image with a padding of zero and 64, but only noticed a minute difference between the images, but it did seem to help with seams. We then have options for seams fix, and you won't need to use this if your image doesn't have a visible grid of lines as this will just run another redraw pass which extends the time for generating the image. The descriptions for the three types of seam fixes are less than helpful but they all essentially operate in the same way by in-painting the seam itself to try and blend it in with the rest of your image 
while none will disable this option and is the default value. You then have three options under each, denoise, width and padding, which operate the same as usual but impacts the seams exclusively. I'll throw up some comparisons on screen, starting with band pass. This option made the least number of changes to the image, but the blurriness around the seam is still visible on a 0.5 denoising strength, so you may need to tinker with this option. Both versions of the half tile offset pass gave the same results on a 0.5 denoising strength, but did change the way the bra looked, but the seam was completely gone from our image. It would be tricky to try and demonstrate all the ways this option could work as we can't use XYZ plot and the explanations aren't that helpful. But in a nutshell, you should play around with this option if you're struggling with the seams in your images. The upscale checkbox determines whether the SD Ultimate Upscale should utilize the upscale options and this is enabled by default as it's required to get the most out of the extension. Lastly, the seams fix checkbox will determine whether the options under the seams fix heading are enabled and this is disabled and set to none by default. Now that we've gone over the settings, here's a quick guide to get you started with upscaling your images. Step one will be to copy the image into the image to image tab, ensuring you also carry over the generation data. Then navigate to resize by and select a value of around two, then set your denoising strength to 0.05. Step 2 is to open the extension and set your target size type to from image to image settings. Then choose the same upscaler you used for the image's high res fix. Hit the generate button and let it perform its magic. If you do a side by side comparison, you should notice a higher amount of detail in your image and hopefully very minimal artifacts as part of this very quick demonstration. But now I'll break down what we just did so we can understand why it's important. We use the same prompts from the image generation so that Stable Diffusion knows what it is we're trying to redraw and it can interpret the type of details we're trying to capture, which will be the same as our original image by Enhanced. We set our resize value to 2 so we can double the resolution of our image, which is important for ensuring we can actually see the details we're generating. But the super important thing to keep an eye on is the denoising strength. The denoising strength determines the amount of change and deviation from your original image that's allowed and this needs to be set at a fairly low value to clamp down and control the number of changes which are made. If you set this value too high you will see many changes to your image which completely changes the overall look, composition and details and it can take some experimentation to find the perfect value for your image. After that we just ensure within the extension that we're using a sensible resolution and using the same upscaler for consistency. Now that we've covered the basics, there are some additional ways you can use this extension in combination with ControlNet to get results on weaker computers with low VRAM. I've done a tutorial on installing ControlNet, so do check it out as it will cover everything you need to know, meaning we could focus this video on using this extension. The steps are the same as before, but this time we'll enable control net, drag in the same image as the one we're using for the upscale, select the tile resample option and choose control net is more important. You will get the same results, but in theory, this should function better on weaker machines, which have less VRAM to spare. You can also take your upscaled image and run it through ultimate upscale again to get even more detail, ensuring you slightly decrease the denoising strength each time to build upon previous refinements. This can be beneficial for achieving super high resolutions without artifacts as you're taking it step by step rather than vamping up the resolution to the maximum in one single image generation. But hopefully this video has been helpful. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button so others can find all the juicy information on this channel. And thanks for 7k subscribers, it's really appreciated. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.